Okay, our next step is going to be to lock the door. And for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first way is a little bit more of a difficult way. Uh, there's a, a few more things involved in it, and will generally not be the way you go. But it does allow me to show you some cool tricks uh, within Kismet and some logical operations that can help you out later on down the road. Now, once we're done with that, I'll come back and show you how you can replace everything we set up with really just a single node that does the job for you. But in this video, what we're going to do is set up the uh, the hard way, so to speak. And it's really not that hard, but it's harder. So let's jump into Kismet. And if we take a look right now, the player's using the trigger, they're getting all these announcements, then they get a warning, and then finally the alarm plays. The moment we actually make it to this point when the alarm has played, I would like the door to lock. As a matter of fact, it would be nice if we locked it beforehand so that if the player got wise and realized they were in trouble, they don't have this little extra five seconds to try to get out of the room. We want to seal them in pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is, well, let's just start this way. Let's talk about what would cause the door to seem locked. Because if we right-click and go to Action, it's not like we have a door lock submenu in here. But if we take a look at the door itself, we've got a trigger, and it has some functionality. We have a wire that's playing our matinee. That opens the door. And another wire that's reversing it, and that closes the door. If we could intercept these wires and basically tell them, hey, the door's locked, do not send this signal, we would have thereby locked the door in terms of what the player would experience. So here's how we're going to do this. Let me take our door network. I'm going to expand it out. And let's hold down Control and Alt. Let me grab my matinee and the two little nodes connected to it. And we'll stretch those out to create some room. I am going to right-click and create a new condition. And for a condition, we're going to grab a comparison. And I'm going to grab a compare bool. Now, a compare bool, really all it's going to do is check the value of a Boolean variable. If you're unfamiliar with Boolean variables, they're just a value that's either true or false, 1 or 0. They're binary. So we'll choose compare bool. And to help make this really clear what we're doing, I'm going to put in an object comment. We'll say is the door locked now here's how this is going to work we're going to plug a boolean variable into this compare bool it's going to check and see what the value of it is if the value is true we get an output from here if it's false we get an output from here that's how this works so let's go ahead and take touched and we'll plug this in. Now, if the door is locked, we don't want anything to happen. If it's not locked, then we want to play our matinee. It really is that easy. So I'm going to hold down Alt and click on the middle of that wire, and we'll take out that extra wire, which is pretty handy that you can do that. Now, all we need is some sort of a variable to control when the door becomes locked. So we'll start off right here with our little bool input. I'm going to right click and choose create new bool variable. By default, this is set to a value of false. So currently the door is not locked, meaning if we jump in and test things, the door works just fine. It is exactly what it's supposed to. So now if we jump into Kismet and we set this to a value of true, which means just come into your B value and set this to 1. Now, I will give you just a little bit of a heads up. The way in which you change Boolean values does have a tendency to change slightly from node to node. On certain sequence objects, you can set between 1 and 0. On others, there's a checkbox that can be on or off, but it all means the same thing. I just want to kind of give a heads up. You'll see that actually here in just a moment, but now you will have heard about it beforehand. So now I've set this to true. Let's choose play from here again. And now the gate doesn't work. Well, we've effectively locked the gate. Now, just to be completely on the safe side, so that maybe the player doesn't run up and get the thing locked out uh, before the gate has time to close, which is really unlikely, but just as an extra security measure, I'm going to take our little compare bool and hit control C, control V, and make a duplicate of it. Let's hold down Alt and unconnect it from false. And I'm going to take out our untouched wire by Alt-clicking on it. Let's put both of these in here. 
And then what we're going to do is say when we untouch, we're also going to check and see that the door is locked. And if it's not locked, we're going to play backwards. So basically, the door is going to check in both directions to see if it's locked. And if it's locked, it's not going to do anything. Okay, now that that second part, you know, it, you could probably argue that it's unnecessary. I'm just kind of throwing it in more as an example than for anything else. Now here's our problem, though, and here's where this gets to be kind of interesting. We now have two separate variables that would need to be switched. What we can do is take either one of them and delete it, and we can take our input, and now we can connect them both to the exact same variable. So now we can set this back to false, zero, and now our doors will work again. Okay, that's great. We have a variable which will effectively lock out our door so it'll quit operating, but how do we change that? How do we take this variable which controls our door lock status and update it? Well, I'm glad you asked, if you asked. I'm going to right click over here next to our little announcement list, go to new action, and there's a set variable sub, uh, subgroup. We're going to choose bool. This allows us to set a Boolean value. Now, I'm going to play this right off of the, the announcement where we say, OK, have it your way. So right as they hit the switch that fifth and final time, we're going to immediately lock the door. Now, let's take a look at this sequence object. It asks for a default value. This time, notice it's a checkbox and not a 1 or 0. It's a different way to make the input, but it means the exact say, the same thing. 0 equals false equals unchecked. So unchecked is false. Our default value in this case, though, is going to be true because we want to lock the door. Remember, our little Boolean comparison up here is asking, is the door locked, true or false? We want to set that to true. Now, we need to give this a target. That's a little, notice that you have a triangle here on the bottom. This is the first time we've seen this thus far. Up to now, all we've had is little squares hanging out the bottom of our sequence objects. A square is an input, meaning it's going to be receiving some sort of data. A triangle is an output, meaning it's going to send out some sort of data. We're going to take the target and plug that over here into our little variable. So now that... As soon as this node fires, as soon as we get our little set boolean, in fact, let's give this an object comment. I'll select it and choose lock the door, like so. And that's going to set that to true, which means the door is locked. So the next time we try to use the door, it should not work. Let's give it a quick test. All right, so currently testing, door's working great. Looks fine. All right, now we come over here. And I'll just kind of fast forward to the end. And already, the door is locked. So nothing is working anymore. That's exactly what we want to see. Okay, so that's in place. Now, currently, I would say that this big, long, red wire that's reaching all the way across our Kismet view is a little bit on the unsightly side. So what we're going to do is save everything right now. We're going to stop this video, and in the next video, I'll show you a way to set this exact same system up in kind of a wireless fashion so that you don't have to have this great big long connected wire which reaches across several different sequence objects. So that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.